EU4 is a game with many aspects to it, but an essential part of a game is religion. Who doesn't love to forcibly convert the papal state to the Islamic religion? You also have the Reformation, which is always interesting, and how it changes the religious map mode within Europe. I'm completely fascinated by the religions of this era, and have made two videos outlining the religions that Paradox have historically missed. Today, however, we are going to discuss one of the most obscure but community-loved religions in the game, Zoroastrianism. This is located in modern-day Iran, and has been declining for centuries up to the start date of EE4. By the time the game starts, this religion has only one province with it as its state religion. In today's video, therefore, we go into the origins of a Zoroastrian religion, and how it works in EE4, looking at the different aspects to it. We also finally discuss what happened to it after the start date. Although it's a small religion in game, the impact it has on the region is significant, and therefore worth discussing. Also, if you want us to go to the holy site of the Old Minster, and organise an EU4 raid with the Minister, then make sure to subscribe so we can get to 100,000 subscribers. We aren't so far away now. So let's firstly begin with the origins of this religion, and how it wound up in EU4. The Zoroastrian religion is one of the oldest known living religions, and it developed around 3,500 years ago. Zoroastrianism became the main state religion for many great Central Asian empires, such as the Parthian, Sasanian, and finally the Archimedid Empire. The priests at the time were known as the Magi, and the ancient Greeks assumed that these people had magical knowledge due to their complex understanding of astronomy. The decline of the religion began, however, after the Arabic people invaded and defeated the Sasanian Empire in 651 AD. Despite this, the religion continued to be followed in the rural areas of Iran, until the Mongol invasions of the 13th century. After this, the Zoroastrians continued to withdraw to the desert towns of Kerman and Yazid. We can see the province Yazid has the state religion in game, so it's nice to see some historical accuracy within E4 of where this religion is at the start of the game. Many Zoroastrians also migrated to other parts of the world as refugees, and specifically India comes to mind, with them gaining quite a large community of Zoroastrians. This religion therefore became widespread, and many people still worship it today, with around 200,000 individuals who follow this religion. We also have some famous individuals like Freddie Mercury, who also followed the faith, and is a world famous icon to many people. So what is actually believed in this religion, and how did it come about in Iran? Well, it all begins with Zoroaster, the founder of the religion. Surprisingly, there's no academic consensus on when he lived, and there's no evidence that can place him in a fixed period of time. The historicalization surrounding him may be part of a trend before the 10th century that historicalizes legends and myths. What is known is that he worked as a priest, and he was a family man with a wife, three sons, and three daughters. When he did live though, the priest rejected the religions of the Bronze Age, since there were many gods and an oppressive class structure. The religions of the day gave the ordinary Iranian people little comfort, since they had strange rituals like animal sacrifices and the use of a hallucinogenic Haoma plant. When Zoroaster was 30 years of age, he had a divine vision of God during a ritual purification next to a river. This god is known as Aurora Mazda, and he revealed to him that there is only one god. This vision apparently radically transformed his view of the world, and he tried to teach this view to others in order to change their lives. The first core belief of the Zoroastrians is that they worship one divine god, known as Aurora Mazda, which means wise lord and he is a creator of all things good in the world. Aurora Mazda is also supported by the Amesha Spentas, who are effectively the archangels of Zoroastrianism. They are the highest spiritual beings created by Aurora Mazda, and each person is accompanied by a guardian angel, which acts as a guide throughout life. Zoroastrians also believe in an evil spirit known as Angra Mainu, the opposite of Aurora Mazda, and therefore incredibly evil. Angra Mainu is therefore a destructive spirit in the dualistic doctrine of the Zoroastrian faith. To aid him in attacking the light, Angra Mainu created a horde of demons, embodying envy and similar qualities. 
He is therefore responsible for all that has wronged the world, but despite the chaos and suffering which is believed to be because of his onslaught, believers expect Angramenu to be defeated in the end of time by Aurora Mazda. His demons will eventually devour each other, but for now we live in the Gooseminch, where the good of mix and evil live together within our world. Zoroastrians believe that upon their death, their spirit is sent to the Bridge of Judgment, and therefore they go to either heaven or hell, based on the good and bad deeds of their lives. The bodies of the dead Zoroastrians also should not be mixed with the elements of the earth, and so traditionally, the bodies of these people were left on the top of stone towers in the scorching desert, where the vultures would come and eat the corpses. Today though, there aren't many vultures around due to urbanisation, and so they have to think of new creative ways to bury the dead. Zoroastrians also typically believe that fire represents God's light and wisdom, but they are not fire worshippers, which some Westerners seem to believe. There's therefore some quite interesting similarities between the Christian religion with good and evil, but also some stark differences where the dead should not be buried underground. Perhaps more could have been known about this religion had Alexander the Great not invaded the area and he killed the priests and ordered the holy book of the Zoroastrians, the Avesta, to be destroyed. While we hear many heroic tales of Alexander the Great, the Iranian Zoroastrians view him entirely differently and far from great. I hope you've enjoyed hearing about the origins and pillars of this religion, and hopefully this gives you some context in game, and why it's represented the way it is. Now we've covered what happened to the religion historically, do Paradox consider the historical flavour of this religion in game? Well firstly, there are actually Zoroastrians in India, but Paradox have chosen not to represent it, which actually makes a bit of sense, because they weren't really significant during this time within India. In recent EU4 updates as well, the Zoroastrian faith has been improved significantly. If you take the province of Shirvan, then you get access to, in my opinion, the most powerful monument in the game. At the monument's peak, you can get plus 10% discipline, minus 10% fire damage, and plus 5% land fire damage. All these modifiers added to your nation will make your army incredibly powerful, particularly as your campaign progresses with discipline being increasingly important. You also receive a bit of trade efficiency at the start of the game, and there is a clear campaign goal for you to try, and you must conquer all the Zoroastrian holy sites, which gives you even more great modifiers, such as plus 10% local goods produced. However, there are trade-offs for converting to this religion. You are firstly very politically isolated, and therefore gain more aggressive expansion than most of the Sunni nations within the area. In comparison to the Christian religions, you also lose access to personal unions, which can seriously improve your campaign very quickly. There are therefore quite a few positives and negatives to this religion, and in a way, it's up to you to convert to it, depending on what you value for your campaign. So to conclude, Zoroastrianism, although it is probably the most obscure religion in the game, has nonetheless a very interesting history, and probably needs to be added into the game in order to make outside of Europe more appealing to play in. What do you guys think of the Zoroastrian religion though? Do you like to play it in E4? Or do you prefer to play as other religions in the game? Let me know in the comments. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye for now. Shout out to our Patreons, J Erickson321, Shadowsinger, Jado52, Cargan, Flyerton, Henrique, Redguard76, Xiaomi, and Charlie Demorel. Your support means a lot, guys.